All right, in the next section here, um, a change in demand. <clears throat> and this is kind of, I touched on this in my last, my last lecture, um, that, that consumer incomes are one of the things that, um, we have a list of categories, and you might wanna know these, the tests, quizzes. Um, what's gonna impact demand? Um, other than price of the item, right? And one of those things is consumer incomes. So um, in 2008, when the Great Recession hit, many people had to lose their jobs. And because of that, they, they ran out of TV. Uh, they ran out of TV, I'm looking at the picture. They, they ran out of money. Um, and they were not able to buy as much. People's spending went down across the board. There, there's actually a, a measurement in economics, it's called consumer sentiment or consumer spending. There's, there's two different measurements. And you'll see that people spend less when the economy is doing worse and that people spend more when the economy is doing better. Which makes sense, right? Um, if, if a bunch of people, if 5% of the population loses their jobs, those people can't buy anything except the basics for a while. And then when they get their jobs back, they can go back to maybe having some, some more um, wasteful or, or more um, <clears throat> spending, buying things that they want instead of they, just things they need. Um, another thing that we're gonna talk about here are substitutes, okay? Um, and, and I kind of talked about substitutes when I was saying that if Baskin Robbins is doing their one dollar one scoops on on the um, 31st of each month, that cold stones go down. That that is an example of a substitute. Same thing with McDonald's or any time. The airlines do this a lot. They'll have price wars, and all of a sudden they'll one airline will lower prices and then everyone will be buying their stuff through that airline through southwest or whatever instead of through the other airlines which causes the other airline airlines to lower their prices um because people aren't buying delta because they're buying southwest flights um so so sometimes the one way a substitute works is when my normal brand another brand is cheaper and i'm just gonna i'm just gonna buy that other brand or I'm gonna go on the other flight or, um, or, or whatever. Um, <clears throat> um, look, uh, at Taft, one of the cool things I, I like a lot about Taft, I, I, like, I love Taft, um, is that um, <clears throat> they have those old pay phones, but there's no pay phones, right? Do you know what I'm talking about near the main office there? Um, you could tell that there once were pay phones there. What a cool thing having pay phones on, on campus when I was a kid. I had I grew up with pay phones. Um, and a substitute for pay phones came along, right? Called iPhones. And all of a sudden, all the pay phones disappeared because why? Right? Where you used to have to use phones outside of your house sometimes to call people. It was common <laughs> when I was a kid. Uh, you know, hey, find, you know, find a quarter. Let's, let's make a phone call when we're on the road. Call a buddy, call someone. Hey, where you at, dude? You know, like that kind of thing. Um, so the, the iPhone made pay phones disappear. Um, flat screens made the cathode ray tube television that I grew up with disappear. Um, I still have some though, because I'm cheap. Um, but I, I do have flat screens as well. I just kept my old TVs and I, I have them scattered around in my, in my backyard, in different places. Um, <clears throat> But yeah, that now you'll never find one of these again, right? Because a substitute came along that was better than the initial and replaced it. So sometimes substitutes will cause this TV's change in demand for a cathode ray tube television fell off the market because of TVs. Another one, and this is something when I was a kid, after um, after payday came. When I say a kid, I mean like college kid. Um, even also when I was a kid kid, when I was your age, when I was in high school, I was working, um, and payday would come, one of the first things I would do is I would go buy myself a CD. Always, just like, I loved CDs, I love music. Um, and you know, you go home and you listen to it all week, all month, that's your new thing. Um, and then all of a sudden a substitute came along for CDs called iPods. 
And I haven't bought a CD since. Well, e even before that, I, I got my computer and now I'm burning my CDs from my buddy's CDs. Um, but then the iPod comes along and now I'm putting my burned CDs on my iPod and I can listen to everything all at once. CD, the market for CDs fell off. Um, th that, that's a good example of a substitute coming along and, and causing the demand of a certain item to, to go down. Um, <clears throat> so substitutes are one, another reason why there can be a change in quantity demand. Um, our book mentions consumer tastes. Um, sometimes as a society, people will just kind of stop liking something. There's like a, a popularity factor that can cause a change in, in quantity demand, not just to go down, but to go up. So let, let's, let's look at this more in terms of going up and going down, because it's easier that way. Pretend, let's pretend that someone really popular, who's a popular person in our world um, that young people like. I don't know. Um, let's say Cardi B. Um, let's say that Cardi comes out and she happens to be wearing a certain brand of clothing. All of a sudden, a bunch of kids are going to come out and buy that brand of clothing. Quantity of demand will go up. Or maybe... Um, Bieber is going to come out and talk bad about his shoes. Lonzo Ball, when, when Lonzo Ball came out with the big baller brand, and then at some point, if you remember, he said, oh man, my, my shoes have been ripping. And all of a sudden, it, people who were buying the BBB, the big baller brand shoes, because Lonzo and everything, um, stopped buying them. They were so expensive, like 500 bucks for a pair of shoes. Are you kidding me? Um, but the demand went down because Lonzo came out publicly and spoke bad about it. So sometimes a change in consumer tastes, for whatever reason, can cause the price of an item to go down. Um, recently, baseball has become much less popular than, say, basketball or football. In the 60s, you know, baseball cards and paraphernalia and collector's items from baseball were really expensive. And now, the bottom of the barrel because it's not as popular anymore. Popularity matters. Um, another one is compliments. Um, compliments. Earpods. I don't wear them. You guys do for your iPhones, right? I see you in my class. You all have your little earpods in. I don't like it because there's no cords. My, I like the cords. I feel like well, something weird going on there. I don't want it right next to my brain transmitting. Um, but then I grew up with cordless phones, so who am I to talk? My brain's already been warped by transmissions. Um, but ear pod sales went ear earbuds, ear pod sales went up um because they're a complement to the iPhone. So everyone's got an iPhone. Um and they came out with this item that's a complement to the iPhone that, that goes with the iPhone. My daughter has a Nintendo Switch Lite and, and she wanted a a joystick, right? That that goes with the Nintendo Switch Lite. So the Nintendo Switch Lite comes out. It's a great thing. They come out with this complimentary item, this item that, that goes well with it. And that demand is gonna is gonna go up because it complements the Nintendo Switch Lite. Um <clears throat> so so sometimes there there are these things called compliments where um an item will come out and all of a sudden it, the current item goes really well with that and it will cause the demand for that item to go up. Also, when ear pods came out, right? All the cordless ear things that I like, because I'm old, um, they became less popular because a compliment came out, and which was also now a substitute, and it caused a demand for the old school earbuds, or the iPhone caused the demand for Blackberries to go down, or, or this kind of thing. Um, or even like the cases, right? iPhone cases, which I have. Actually, I have my wife's old one. I don't know if you ever see it. It's like, ooh, cool, right? Um, it, these things, there's a new market for it because iPhones come out, they break when you drop them. So now there has to be a compliment to make sure they don't break cases. And cases become something that, that the demand for go, goes through the roof. So, um, 
number of consumers. Um, if, if you can get your products sold in China, you just got a billion more people who might buy your stuff, right? If you can get your product on Amazon or on Alibaba or on a popular consumer website, you have more consumers who see your item and that potentially gives you a, an opportunity for more sales. So oftentimes you'll see companies trying to fight to get into foreign markets. Like I want, I want to, you know, get, um, get my item um, marketed in China because there's a lot of people in China who have, who have money and might want to, might want to buy this. So number of consumers also is, um, is another um, predictor in, um, or another thing that could cause a change in, in demand. Um, or the opposite, if, if China starts tariffing you like they did with soybeans, and then all of a sudden there's a billion people who used to buy your soybeans, but then, you know, China tariffs soybeans because of the, the tariff war that happened between China and, and, um, and Trump uh, during the last presidency, that can hurt demand because there's less consumers, because there's less people buying your stuff because China is now tariffing your stuff. So it goes both ways. And these are all examples that you, you, you probably want to know for um, upcoming tests and quizzes.